Charles Darwin is one of the most influential scientists of all time. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection revolutionized science in the 19th century. In 1831, Darwin joined a global expedition of discovery as a naturalist aboard HMS Beagle. He spent four years observing and comparing animals and plants in many regions of the world previously unknown to scientists. Darwin always said uh, in a very evocative sentence that the voyage of the Beagle has been by far the most important event in my life and it determined my whole career. He understood what a transformative event that was. During his time on the Beagle, particularly in the Galapagos, Darwin saw animals that were different from animals on the mainland and distinct to each island. These startling observations fueled the development of his evolutionary theory in years to come. So what he came back with was a fabulous research collection of the objects, the animals and plants, and reflections on their place in the natural world. Upon his return, Darwin began a prolific correspondence with his scientific colleagues around the world. This exchange of ideas was critically important to the development of Darwin's ideas. Darwin had a, had a very large influence in the United States. He had friends and acquaintances and correspondents in the natural history world. Darwin's research led him to contact one of the rising stars of America's scientific community, James Dana who had recently completed his own circumnavigation of the globe during a US-sponsored research voyage. Their common backgrounds led to a detailed correspondence on their own unique observations about the natural world. I think we could really say that Dana was the American Darwin. Dana had the same range of expertise, a great knowledge of the whole of the natural history kingdom. He had traveled the world in the same way as Darwin. He had spent his life collecting evidence to explore the way that nature operated. He was considered probably the greatest American geologist for most of the 19th century. Uh, he also developed certain ideas that shows what tremendous insight he had. Mutual interest in both the details and the grand theories of science connected the two men. Darwin was anxious to learn about the things that Dana had collected and, and had uh, described because it was a continuation of his own interests as well. And they both had, of all things, a great interest in barnacles. They also had interest in corals. Their surviving correspondence offers a wonderful example of how Darwin worked with the greatest minds of the day as he developed his theory of evolution. Ultimately, Darwin published his ideas in The Origin of Species in 1859, a book that sent shockwaves throughout the world. There's never been a book published before or after, I think, that had the impact and the spread, the global spread, since The Origin of Species. As the public and the scientific world weighed the meaning of evolution by natural selection, Darwin knew that important gaps of evidence in the fossil record would prevent some from accepting his ideas. Among the first generation of scientists to read and be influenced by Darwin's ideas, O.C. Marsh was motivated to seek out fossils to test Darwin's concepts. O.C. Marsh, who was the creator and director of the, of, of the Peabody, had been in England uh, in the early, early 60s. Uh, and there he was a young zoologist, mineralogist, geologist, right in the middle of this turmoil of Darwin's book having come out. After returning to the United States, Marsh unearthed and assembled a comprehensive collection of fossil horses, which provided critical evidence for intermediate forms between ancestral and modern species. At the time of their discovery, they were immensely influential to scientists and the public in ongoing debates about the validity of evolutionary ideas. It was the first major evolutionary transition spanning something like 60 million years from a little animal with four toes at the front that was no bigger than a dog, the modern huge horse which only has one finger in each foot. Nothing like this had ever been discovered before. A clear series of evolution in the fossil record. Now when Darwin wrote The Origin of the Species, he was very dubious about what 
the fossil record could ever tell because in his view it would always be too incomplete. But here was the fossil record of one kind of animal, the horse, brilliantly documented. And this was, in a way, a tremendous vindication of Darwin's theory. Darwin's influence in America and around the world persisted through the 19th century and continues today. The legacy left behind by the reactions of his contemporaries offers a window into the meaning of his ideas to those who first encountered them and continues to shape how they are interpreted today. Mm -hmm.